In this video, I want to give you a quick overview, a quick summary of what I refer to as the compound performance penalty problem. And I'm not the only one who has noticed this problem or is not the only one who is talking about this problem. And I'll get back to that later in this video. Um, but some of the other videos about this topic are quite long. So I wanted to create a shorter summary. By the way, this video is part of a series of videos that I am making about software performance optimization. So if you check out the description below this video, you can find a link to the playlist that contains all these videos. The whole debate started with the observation that hardware gets faster, but software seems to be getting slower. Why is that happening? In my opinion, one of the core causes of this problem is what I refer to as performance complacency. And performance complacency is the attitude that you don't have to worry about uh, performance in your software because the hardware is getting faster and faster all the time. So um, even if your uh, software is a little bit slow, it's just a matter of time before hardware will make it fast enough, or you can simply upgrade to a faster server or whatever. You can just throw hardware at the problem. You don't have to tune your software. Now, if you make this reasoning or uh, this kind of justification just for your own application, I might tend to agree with you that, yeah, sometimes uh, a small performance increase won't make a big difference and time to market and development cost is typically more important than performance. However, let's have a look at what happens when you, when you apply that attitude across a whole web app stack. As you can see from this uh, diagram here, we have a front end on the left and we have a back end on the right. And as you can see, uh, there are quite a few layers in between the hardware here at the bottom and your application here at the top, both in the front end and in the back end. All of these layers compete for the CPU, meaning they want to execute on the CPU. So that means that the more time each of these layers here take, the less time there is for your application. Right. This is also illustrated up here is the more CPU time out of the 100% CPU time we have available that these layers here take, the less there is available for your application at the top of the stack. Let us have a look at a simplified example of what the compound performance penalty means. In the case at the top, you have an application which in total consists of eight layers. Each of these layers is taking the exact same amount of time. This is probably not realistic in, in the real world, but let's just assume that for the sake of the calculations here. And that means that um, each layer takes 12.5% of the total CPU time, and that leaves 12.5% of the CPU time for your application. Now imagine a situation where uh, the layers below your application only take 6.25% each of the CPU time. This leaves 56.25% of the CPU time for your application. Now, if you only look at the percentages, it, it doesn't look like a big increase. It, you go from 12.5% of the CPU time to 56. So it's like you get 43.75% more of the CPU time. But when you look at how many more times CPU time that your application now has available. Yeah, then you can see here that when you divide the 56.25 with 12.5%, that now you have actually 4.5 times more CPU time available for your application. And this will probably translate into approximately 4.5 times higher performance of your application. Of course, this depends on what your application is actually doing. Um, if it is not able to use that extra CPU time, then you will not see any performance increase. But let's just, for the sake of the argument, uh, assume that your application, if it was a computer game, was actually able to use all that CPU time, then yes, you would get a 4.5 time performance increase. So why does the software get slower? Well, one of the reasons is the uh, performance complacency that I mentioned earlier in this video that uh, 
people or a lot of developers just don't really seem to care so much about performance. And they tend to care more about the development speed. And because of that, we tend to use more frameworks and toolkits that do more of the work for us. And we just have to configure these, these um, toolkits, right? Instead of having to code everything from scratch ourselves. And so that is what happens at the application level. We put in more frameworks and toolkits. And within the frameworks and toolkits, the developers also add more um, features, more responsibilities, so that the frameworks and toolkits can take care of more and more of the work for the developer, right? So that development speed goes up. Um, but unfortunately, that has the side effect sometimes that performance then goes down. So here's what happens once we start adding layers to our application. So at the top here, we just have two layers, each taking 12.5%, and that leaves 75% of the CPU time for our application. Then we add two more layers here, each taking 12.5% of the CPU time, which leaves only 50% of the CPU time for our application. Now, obviously, a part of these 25% uh, that are used in these two layers would before have been used up here, right? So uh, it's not like the um, the total performance of your application drops by 25% just because you add these two layers, because after all, some of this work here would have had to be done up here. But there will be some performance drop, and you don't have any control over the performance inside of these layers, right? You would have had that up here where you wrote these two layers yourself, but you decide to save some time and now you lose the control over the performance. You now only control what happens with the 50% of the CPU time. Now let us imagine that the bottom four layers here are optimized by the developers working on them. So now they only take 10% of the total CPU time each, and that leaves 60% of the CPU time for your application, right? So your application just got another 10% of the CPU time, um, available for itself. But then what tends to happen is that we simply add more convenience layers and each of these layers, they take some of the CPU time, right? So in this case illustrated here, we have added another two layers, each taking 12.5% of the CPU time, leaving only 35% of the total CPU time for your application. So even if these layers down here were optimized and are now faster, you simply just added more layers out of convenience and end up with less CPU time for your application. Now, of course, the performance drop from this situation up here to the situation down here is not a 25% performance drop because, as I mentioned earlier, part of what goes on in these two added layers here would have had to be done up here in this layer still. Um, but you no longer control how it is done, so you have no control over the performance of this anymore. Or maybe maybe the layers give you a little bit of control, but you cannot change it. You can only do what these layers make available for you. In defense of the common developer, designing an application as a set of layers or any software as a set of layers is actually often how we're taught to design software in university or in coding school or in books or wherever else you learn to program. So the basic idea is that each layer in the stack makes a certain set of tasks easier to do with the layer below it. So for instance, if the bottom layer here was a network interface card driver, then the layer above could be a TCP IP implementation, and this the layer here could be an HTTP or a TLS implementation, and uh, the layer up here could be some application uh, level specific or application specific protocol, and up here you have your own application, right? So your own application only needs to uh, know about this application specific uh, protocol layer here. It does not need to know anything about HTTP or TLS or TCP or how the driver. Um, works at the bottom. And so this makes your application development faster because after all, not having to implement TCP IP every time you uh, implement a new application does tend to speed up um, software development or application development. Now, 
A side effect of this layering is that for each of these layers here to be um, properly reusable across many different applications, then each layer has to be um, capable of handling a lot of different use cases and a lot of different situations, and it also has to produce or to offer a higher degree of configurability than if you had implemented that layer yourself specifically for the needs of your application. And the result of this um, more general purpose behavior and higher degree of configurability is unfortunately often, not always, but often um, a lower performance than if that layer had been tailor-made for the needs of your specific application. You might also even lose a little bit of control as one layer here might decide to hide some of the features available down here at the lower level. And so to use a term from economics, the externalities of a layered design, a layered software stack is often, not always, but often slower code and lower control of what goes on at the lower levels. A simple solution, which I have been uh, talking about for quite a few years now, is the concept of optional abstractions. So when we learn to create a layered design in school, quite often um, we, are, we are taught that a given layer should abstract away or should encapsulate the layers below, so there should be no access, for instance, from this uh, yellow layer here at the top, the application layer, down to the bottom layer down here. That access must always go through all the layers in between. But in practice, that does not always work very well. What tends to work a lot better is that you make this stack here consist of optional abstractions. And that means that you're able to peel off these layers here um, in case you need it, until you get down to a level um, that suits the needs that you have. So in case you're implementing an application that needs a ton of performance and you might not even want to use TCP, maybe you can go all the way down to the network interface card driver here and program that directly, right? But if you have another corner of your, uh, your application that needs to use TCP, then maybe you can just switch to using the TCP layer, okay? And if you have another corner of your application that needs to use the HTTP layer, then that corner can use the HTTP layer. And if you have another corner that needs your application-specific um, protocol that runs on top of HTTP and TCP, etc., then you can access that layer specifically, right? But the stack should be designed so that you can peel off the layers and get down to the level of control and thus also performance that your application needs. And you will often not be taught to design your code like that, but in practice it just, it just works better. By the way, as a general principle, designing for composability is really useful, so that is a topic I will return to in a future video. Compound performance penalties are not the only cause of performance problems in the typical application. Quite often it is possible to get like a 2 to 3x performance improvement if you just know what to look for. In some cases even 10x and in fewer cases maybe even 100x and in much rarer cases even 1000x but those are usually the cases where there is some kind of algorithmic optimization that is possible within the application. If you check out the description below this video, then I have a link to a, a video that explains the 9 plus 1 core optimization principles that I use when I am performance optimizing applications myself. That's it for this video about the compound performance penalty problem. Remember to check out the description below the video for links to related videos and playlists. and. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos about software performance optimization and software design and similar topics, please subscribe to my channel.